All right, welcome back to Photoshop. So today we're gonna to take a look at a really cool technique and it is a complete time saver. However, it's not a technique that you're gonna use all the time. So a lot of times I actually have to watch my own video because I can't remember the quick keys for step and repeat. The first thing we're gonna do, and I've already created it, uh, I'm gonna do a 2000 by 2000 pixel image. And, and you can do it whatever size you want. It's just, this is gonna make it easy for me to do the tutorial, because of the math. You'll see here in a second. All right, so we've got this wonderful square right here. And we're gonna do a very quick step and repeat first, so you can see what it's actually doing, and then I'll get more involved as we go. And there's a couple different variations here whether it creates one file or multiple files when we do this. And I'll show you both ways to make it really, really easy. Step and repeat. Number one, first thing you're gonna do is we're gonna actually come down here and I'm using the rectangle tool. Remember, I have a custom toolbar here, so your toolbar might be a little bit different, but you wanna come down here and get the rectangle tool. We do not wanna use the rectangle selection tool, we're gonna do rectangle. I'm gonna go up here right to where the beginning of this starts. And I'm gonna do my best to get it exactly where it should be. But if it doesn't, I'm not gonna go back and do it. So we're gonna click and we're gonna make a long rectangle right here and try to get that at 2000. Ooh, I did. And let's make it a little bit bigger. Let's go for 50 pixels if I can get it. D at 2000. Right there, perfect. All right, we're filling that with black at this point. This has a stroke, we're gonna get rid of the stroke. All right, so we have our first rectangle. And this is the trick with this here, all right? The next thing is a quick key. And the quick key is gonna vary whether you're on a PC or a Mac. I am on a Mac. So I'm going to do Command Option T, which is the transform key. If you're on a PC, it's gonna be Control Alt T. And you can see when we did that, we got the transform function up here. In this case, all we're gonna do is move this. So I'm gonna hold my shift key so it moves perfectly horizontal when I do this. And I'm just gonna do this sort of random here. I could sit here and do the math and try to figure out how far I wanna go. But we're gonna go right to about 100. Let's try to get that 100 pixels. All right, perfect, I'll let go. And that should be pretty even spacing. All right, once I have that done, I'm gonna come over here and I'm going to apply what I just did. Very important, you must apply. And now comes the easy part. I'm gonna hit Command Option Shift T, or on a PC, it's gonna be Control Alt Shift T. And basically I'm holding down the Command Option Shift and I'm just gonna start hitting T. So I'm gonna hit T, 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 T. And you can see as we go along, it's step and repeat. And it does that the whole way across until we're done. I can just click off the move tool and bam, just like that, recreated this pattern the whole way across. You'll notice it did it in one layer over here. So we're gonna turn this layer off and we're gonna do the same thing, but we're gonna alter this just a teeny tiny bit. So I'm gonna grab the rectangle tool. I'm gonna try to line it up the best I can. And we're gonna draw that rectangle. So I'm gonna to try to get that right at 50 pixels again in 2000. Very hard to do this. Life just doesn't want to become easy. All right, we're doing 49 pixels because I can't get 50. Good enough. And I don't want to type it in even though I could type it in. You could obviously just come right over here and type all this stuff in and that would fix the problem. So last time when we hit that quick key, which on my computer was command option T, we did it with this little blue rectangular bar. I'm gonna actually click off that so it applies this as a layer. But I'm now gonna do the same thing. So I'm gonna do command option T and it's gonna reselect that. But if you notice what's gonna happen now, it's gonna do the same thing, but it's gonna recreate layers each time it does it. So we're gonna come over here. We're going to hold that shift. I'm gonna move this over to about 100 pixels or 98, that's pretty close, all right? We're going to apply that, and now we're gonna do 
the command option shift T and you notice it's doing the same thing, step and repeat, but this time it's creating its own separate layer. So if I wanted to move these or get rid of one for some reason for some sort of a design element, all right? So I just did step and repeat, but let's say I wanted to come in here and remove number eight. I can remove number eight. Could you do that in the layers? Yeah, it's a little more convoluted, but this is just a whole lot easier to do it this way and delete that. So let me show you the difference once again. Both of them, we made the rectangle tool and I'm just gonna make a rectangle tool. The first one, we did the command option T with this blue rectangle line around it. The second way where it makes individual layers, you hit your move tool and you, you turn it into that shape and then you hit it. That was the difference on whether it made it into one layer or multiple layers. So let's take a different look or a different way to do something like this. So this time, just hit command Z. We go down here to the custom shapes and we got this wonderful little chicken. And what we're gonna do here, just to make this go a little bit easier, we're gonna go up to view, guides, new guide layout. And what I want is two, two, because I wanna create this kind of cross grid center. So we're gonna go use those guides to do this next one. All right, so our next step is we're gonna take that custom tool and we're gonna draw our little rooster because we're gonna make a clock out of the roosters because for some reason we're obsessed with roosters and that's what we wanna do is make a clock. All right, so I'm gonna take the rooster and I'm gonna move it just so I'm gonna center it at this spot where I want it. Pretty good there, he's centered, I'm happy with that. Then we're gonna come down here and click on this again because if you remember, we need that selected to do it on one layer. This first one we're gonna do on one layer. Then we're gonna use our top secret quick key, which is command option T or control alt T on that PC and we got our transform box here. And then we're gonna move this little anchor point to the center. It's hard to get it exactly on the center so it's easier just to come up here. And this is why I did 2000 by 2000 pixels because the math is so easy. I can just do 1000 pixels by 1000 pixels and boom, we're perfectly in the center. And then we wanna move this. So we wanna move this 30 degrees because that's how off hand is on a clock. So we're gonna come right up here. We're gonna type in 30. And boom, just like that, it automatically moves that 30 degrees. So now we can apply that just like before. And then we're gonna use our quick key of command, option, shift, T, or control, alt, shift, T, and just start hitting T's. One, two, three, four, five, six. Boom, just like that, I can click on the move tool and boom, we've got a perfect clock and a perfect circle. Now this is the issue. You'll notice the chickens are at all these different angles. We could manually come in here and make a selection and try to rotate them perfectly to get it aligned so everything works out. However we would wanna do it but it's not the most efficient. Look, if these were perfect circles, you it wouldn't matter. This would just work perfect. It would be really simple. You wouldn't need to do it the other way. So we're gonna turn this off and we're gonna do it the other way. So we're gonna come down here and we're gonna grab this. We're gonna make our little chicken, our chicken clock. I'm gonna move them. He's pretty close to where I want them. That looks pretty good. So maybe I'll nudge him over just a little bit. All right, so we got the chicken where we want, the top chicken. Now remember, in this mo mode, we don't wanna reclick this to reselect them. We want them as a layer. And then I'm gonna hit the command option T. It's gonna bring our transform up. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna move this little point down to the center. We're gonna put that exactly at a thousand, but makes a perfect circle for us. We don't have anything going a little wonky. Cool, that's a thousand. And we're gonna do the same thing as we did before. We're gonna rotate it 30 degrees. And we're gonna hit apply. And we're gonna do the same thing. So command option shift T, make the little roosters all the way around. Sometimes I say chicken, doesn't make a difference. We got the same issue. All the little roosters are at different angles. So this is where it helps. You'll notice this time we've got all these different little roosters as individual layers. So I can take this little rooster right here and hit Command T is transform and rotate them back. 
And right above there, I've got a little diagram that says 30 and go 30 degrees. And boom, he's going to be rotated 30 degrees back at the same angle, just like that rooster. And then I can go to the next one and I can hit command T and we can rotate this guy, right? You could also come up here and just do, instead of rotating them back in this direction, you can also come up into this area. Now this time we want to do it minus, but he's rotated twice. So it's not 30 degrees, it's 60 degrees. So we're going to hit minus 60. Boom, just like that, we apply it. And now he's straight. And then we come to the next one. So here, we're gonna hit Command T. We're gonna come up here and hit minus 90, because it's gonna be three times. And boom, he's straight. We just keep doing that the whole way around. You just have to make sure that you know which way you're rotating. However, when you come over here to this side, it's a little bit quicker and easier to actually rotate the other direction. That's the roti rotating counterclockwise, you could always rotate clockwise to do the same exact thing. And that is how you use step and repeat to make a perfect circle or a clock. All right, so I've deleted everything. This time we will make a little flower. So we'll go to the custom thing. We'll go up here, we'll slide up. We will grab this flower. I like that flower the best. And we'll make ourselves a little flower. All right, we're gonna move that flower. Center that. We're gonna reactivate it because we're just gonna do it as one this time. We do our super top secret quick key, which is command option T. We're going to take our point. We're going to put that in the center. We will make this 1,000 and this one 1,000. We're going to move this 30 degrees. We're also going to come in here and just move it down a little bit. See why. All right. Perfect. Actually, let's not move it that far. Let's move it 15 degrees. Yeah, that looks better. And we're gonna scale this one. So we're gonna make them smaller. So we do it even, so it's doing on both sides. We're gonna make sure we click the link. We're gonna make this 95%. So we've moved it 15 degrees, moved it down but we've also scaled it down a little bit and I shifted it this way. We're gonna hit apply. And now when we do our command shift T, you're gonna see each time it does it, it's gonna move it and reduce that size. So it's smaller and smaller and smaller. And because I moved it off center a little bit, we're getting this really cool little shape here. It's lagging behind. We just keep making it go this way until we feel like stopping. Say that's good. Come up here, click OK. Boom, just like that, we've created all these cool little dots. It's still going here from all the T's that I hit. There we go. There's our design. All created on one layer, though you could do this on multiple layers, but that would be a lot of layers if you did it. And that's how you use step and repeat to create some really cool designs inside of Adobe Photoshop. If you find this video helpful, it would be so wonderful if you could give us a thumbs up. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave those below and don't forget to subscribe.